our society has been led by the economy and politics mm. and science over the yeah. past few decades and you know we see where we ended up with this pandemic maybe now it's time for arts uh, to play a bigger role in our society Hi Annelik, C. Brandy, if I'm right. Uh, welcome to this interview for today's Art of Magazine channel. Um, I think you've got a really interesting story to tell, developing from a tax lawyer to organizing an art summit. Uh, I read something about getting in touch with your creative soul, very interesting. So yeah, just start <laughs> from your background. <laughs> No, very, uh, very happy to be here. Indeed, it's quite a different world now to be in the art world uh, compared to um, working crazy hours in London as a tax lawyer. Um, but in all honesty, the tasks that I do are still quite comparable. It's just a topic that is much more interesting. Um, so it's still a lot of project management and still a lot of international people from all over the world that I'm dealing with, which was the same in London. So mm. yeah, it doesn't feel too far off, to be honest. How, I think it was a kind of a timeout session in Verbia. So just, just tell us briefly how uh, you developed the idea to create such an art summit in this place, Verbia. Um, I really love art and I think a lot of people do. Um, it was always a hobby to go to museums, see new shows and um, just a year before we temporarily moved to Verbier, I started studying modern and contemporary art. Um, it was kind of after 15 years of working crazy hours that was my, you know, my one thing to do. Okay, let's, let's do something I really, really enjoy. And obviously being in London, it was a great mix of uh, learning about it uh, through amazing books and amazing professors, but also visiting artist studios, going to great exhibitions and like really being inside the art world in London at that time. So when I arrived in Verbier... Catching fire, a... catching fire in London, huh? Exactly, exactly. It was uh, <laughs> definitely, you know, there was so much to do, so much to see. Mm. And you would learn about Tracy Emin in the morning and in the afternoon you would see her work. Uh, mm. It was just a very stimulating experience. And then when I moved to Verbier, I was on a sabbatical for six months. It meant I couldn't finish my studies, which I was quite upset about. But there I met a lot of people that were also closely connected to the art world, not necessarily their job maybe, but being a collector for years or, you know, very close to an artist, very different connections. Mm -hmm. And they were all asking, oh, what's going on in London? And can you tell us a bit more? And I started to connect them to each other. And this is kind of how the whole idea started when we saw, wow, this is really a big international group of art lovers all based here. Can we do something special, something that doesn't exist yet in the art world? Um, which in my opinion was always quite commercial, uh, especially also when you speak to people that don't know anything about art, they would always talk about, oh, Jeff Koons and high prices. And, you know, it seems to be more of a commodity than what art is really made for, i.e. to inspire you. So mm -hmm. when we had this group in Verbier, we thought, okay, let's do something different, something completely non-commercial where people can meet and talk about the cultural value of art and kind of never talk about the commercial value of art. Um, so that's what we tried to do, really to set up a think tank where people on a certain theme, which changes every year, get inspired to think differently. That's really a completely different approach than probably, I don't know if, if you can compare to any other art event uh, globally, but 
in my opinion, yeah, I, I can't think of anything similar to that. Um, as you said, non-transactional, but you even went further. You are inviting indigenous people from Brazil. You are cooperating with UNHCR. Uh, why that? That's really out of any normal argument. Yeah. No, I think we very strongly believe in partnerships. Um, and this is why we have a lot of institutional partners and academic partners uh, and of course cultural partners. Uh, generally they're all non-profits and um, for example UNHCR came onto our way because we had a political theme. It was called We Are Many yeah. in 2019 mm -hmm. and um, this is also when um, the first Brazilian influence started. So Jochen Volz is the director of Pinacoteca in Sao Paulo. He was our partner and museum director. And he was also the first one to invite an indigenous thinker uh, to come to the summit. And uh, UNHCR was very inspired by what we're doing and uh, suggested to collaborate. So then in 2020, when we had an ecological theme, I said, oh, such a shame, you know, it doesn't fit with our theme. So. I don't know how we can still collaborate and they were like no we, we want to stay involved with what you're doing it's super important and um for refugees you know the ecological crisis is also a very leading factor mm -hmm. so i think we should stay uh, with the summit so yeah then we continued our collaboration and that's actually true for a lot of the partners that come on board uh, at the summit, they all remain for years, which is great. Uh, what we do is we mix artists with other thinkers yep. uh, and then they, they always are connected to the theme. So uh, when we had the political theme, there was a professor on sociology. And when we had art in the digital age, we had a professor in neurology who explained, you know, what actually mm -hmm. happens in your head when you experience VR. So it's always mixing artists with other thinkers that we think will lead to new ideas and generating, you know, innovation through art. But the focus is, is definitely always art. We have uh, the privilege really to uh, be close to Beatrix Roof. And she was the yeah. director of the Stieling Museum in 2017. And she co-designed really the format of the Verbia Art Summit. And her theme was uh, growth or degrowth of the 21st century art museum. And so the starting point was growth uh, of the mm -hmm. discussion in 2017, but it's applicable to many different aspects of art. So she was interested obviously in institutions, but artists also spoke about, you know, because the museums have grown so much in size, I now need to produce works that are very big. And sometimes I want to make like a tiny little painting, but it doesn't fit in one of these ginormous white spaces. Uh, and then we also talked about sizes of the collections of the art collectors that were there. So it's always a theme that is relevant in the art world, but then we start from there and we take it into a bigger uh, subject. What have been the, the personal highlights for you? Because he had so many interesting people from all over the world. Too many, <laughs> Same, to be honest. Um, but I think by partnering with a museum from Brazil, uh, that made the summit truly global. And uh, the Brazilian thinkers, but even this professor of sociology who came from Portugal, but was talking about the global south, I think it opened a lot of people's minds for the non-Western view, uh, which is very important. But as we are a truly global platform, um, that is exactly what we want to do. We want to show different voices, show you different ways of experiencing our contemporary society. And it's always connected to this one big social theme, as you said, you know, which changes every year. Um, and this year we're continuing the resource hungry theme because yeah, the ecological crisis is one of the biggest issues of our time. Um, and I think that will always remain part of our topic um, in the years to come. 
What is the difference for you between our perception and the non-Western perception, as you mentioned? Well, for example, um, last year we had a speaker, Jamila Ribeiro, mm -hmm. and she's, she came to talk about resource hungry, an ecological theme, mm -hmm. but she spoke a lot about feminism and racism mm -hmm. and how these all of these big social issues are connected and that you yeah. in Brazil cannot look at ecology as a one topic. It's always very connected. And I think like for me personally also, that has been the key lesson of the summit. So therefore we're very happy to stick with these big social issues. And generally what we do is we look at a summit, uh, what kind of issues arise. So we can see in 2018, when we had the summit on uh, art in the digital age, everybody was talking about, you know, Donald Trump and fake news and what do you believe? So it was very clear, you know, that the political had to be on the agenda for the 2019 summit. And that is actually what, what is happening every year. So in 2019, everybody was very preoccupied with climate change. So that became the, the topic of the next year. So actually, the thematics always already flow out of a summit for the next year. So the pandemic situation will influence the next summit? Well, it did already very much influence this summit, <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, we were actually going to partner with a museum from Beijing uh, for 2021. Uh, but then early on in March, we realized, okay, that will not be an option um, for January 21. So then we decided, okay, let's continue the resource hungry theme. Of course, the pandemic will come up in the debates because it influences our society at the moment. Um, and then in 2022, we'll hopefully have a new interesting theme again. So this summit will be half in person and half virtual or summit or 100% virtual and half in person. <laughs> yeah, it will definitely be virtual. Um, so that's what we're focusing on at the moment. And then on the 13th of December, they will announce new regulations in Valais. Yeah. If by that time we can meet up in person in a small group, <laughs> we will definitely organize an in-person event. And I think the same applies for other organizations with whom we can then partner uh, live. And otherwise we will pre-record the Swiss speakers that we invited for the 2021 summit. But anyway, you will be on place with your team in Verbier. It all depends on the situation, yeah. I, okay. I'm based myself in Amsterdam. Um, we do definitely have a group of people that will be together in Verbier. I hope to be there and otherwise I will also be in Amsterdam. You invited a lot of female speaker, I realized. So it's, it's kind of what you mentioned before, uh, feminism, female culture. Uh, you are respecting to perhaps a higher degree than other events? What I think we tried to do was to get to a 50-50 balance. <laughs> uh, so we had two female directors now and two male uh, directors of the Verbia Art Summit. And this is also what we try to do with the speaker groups. Uh, so that is truly a mix of thinkers. Um, last year we ended up with more women. Uh, it also depends on who can make the actual date, but um, yeah, we try to we try to balance it. You try to become a global platform. Quite difficult at the moment, but still a, a long-term objective. For sure, yeah. We were very much influenced by a Swiss speaker that came at the 2020 summit, Stefan Kegi, mm -hmm. and he very much asked, "How can we transform?" How can every industry in the art world transform itself? Which was a question that we also took uh, wholeheartedly. And after our January event last year, we started thinking about um, organizing perhaps smaller scale summits in different locations uh, where people then don't need to travel, but they just go if it's in their local museum with local artists, local thinkers, but continuing the theme that started at the Verbier Art Summit. And then we can continue the thematic for a whole year, uh, but in a more local setting. And then people don't have to travel. So it's better for the environment, 
um, but also the ideas from the summit can then spread uh, and that will help for us. Example to, to, for example to Brazil, Sao Paulo. Exactly, exactly. So what we've always done is after the summit in Verbier, we launch a publication mm -hmm. and that is launched at the museum with whom we collaborated. So mm -hmm. yeah, indeed, for example, we launched at uh, Pinacoteca in Sao Paulo and they have a huge reach. So even their newsletter talking about this book launch reached uh, millions of people in Brazil, which is fantastic. It seems that this kind of art summit has an impact on other themes and other people. So it's kind of spreading out into the world. Uh, do you have in mind kind of an international roadmap to do this? Uh, uh, I call it art for change or um, do we have some vision in mind here or is it is it a virtual uh, vision perhaps or yeah exactly i think we're very happy uh, to to test the virtual format this year mm -hmm. um because as i just said based on this thinking by stefan we also want to collate all of that information that comes out of these local verbia art summits in a digital platform where people can then have tools to share, uh, workshops to follow. Um, so the digital platform was something we were building anyway. And now for the 2021 summit, we can test how that indeed works. Um, as we stand for innovation, it will have some hopefully features with a wow factor uh, that will make it less boring because we are quite aware that people are now on webinars and you know, <laughs> behind their laptops all day long. Um, but we definitely see the digital platform as an opportunity to be very inclusive. It is always open to the public for free. So people from all over the world can tune in at their own time zone because we will leave the idea of a conference with fixed time frames, but just be open for two days for people to explore freely. And yeah, we're gonna test uh, how, how that will work in 2021. We were very happy to collaborate with Art Geneva because they took place at the same time uh, for the past two years and they live streamed our events to the audience that is also interested in yeah. a non-profit platform like ourselves. I think perhaps uh, we will collaborate with Art Fairs. For now, it feels, because we operate in such such a different uh, realm will try to be to remain independent because you're not uh, working in in the commercial area you you try you, you said i think you you you're speaking about a clean platform <laughs> yeah no i wouldn't say clean <laughs> but um I think at an art fair, you're expected, you know, to buy and sell, and that is what you're doing there. And mm -hmm. when you come to the Verbier Art Summit, you're expected to think. And generally people at art fairs, for example, Art Basel also has an amazing salon in which yeah. they have really interesting speakers, but people are too busy to visit it because they're buying art, which is totally mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. But if, if you come to our non, profit platform you're really interested in a certain topic and that's why you're there and there is no art to look at and there is no art to buy or to sell you know you're there for a different reason so i think we attract uh, yeah a different kind of audience so we're we're mixing really the artist with other thinkers perhaps better chance to cooperate with universities yeah yeah we're already collaborating a lot with the swiss universities Mm -hmm. Last year we had a collaboration with Head Genève mm -hmm. and um, yeah. their students actually came to Verbier for a full day to look at our venues and to think about the programming with us and then they came up with all different propositions of how we could improve the summit which was a wonderful exercise mm -hmm. and then they all attended the summit as well. Head Genève for our viewers is the Haute École des Arts et Design. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was a very interesting collaboration for us. And we've always invited students to participate um, at our event. And again, this is something we want to do more global. And there I could very well see that we would live stream, for example, to universities. Yeah, we just very strongly believe art has a role to play. And 
our society has been led by the economy and politics mm -hmm. and science over the yeah. past few decades and you know we see where we ended up with this pandemic maybe now it's time for arts uh, to play a bigger role in our society artists are very forward thinkers they often are creating works about things we can't even predict that will start happening why don't we use this as a as a guidance it's yeah. it's art and imagination that we need in difficult times like this when everything has become unpredictable i think that is definitely a strength uh, of an in-person event that you have these new connections and this is also why the verbier art summit has been successful because people when they make it all the way up to that mountain they have time because there's nothing else to do than to talk to each other you know you're not coming there just for an hour's talk. You're staying the whole weekend and you yeah. have time in depth conversations. The next day you continue a debate and then the next day again, um, yeah, which leads to meaningful uh, conversations. Thank you, Annelik, and a lot of success for social change, for art, for the Verbi Art Summit and the virtual Verbi Art Summit. And hope to see you soon in person. That would be great. Thank you so much for your time. It's great to speak to you.